says. The makers of the all new For pleasure, take three. I'm driving in my pickup, which is a Ford, because Ford built America, and I respect that. Though the pilgrims were go-getters too, coming over here in those little wooden boats. They had to be crazy, or believers like the Foursquare Gospel people, or both. And Karen's with me, right up snug against me. I hate it when you look in a truck and there's air between a man and a woman. She's sitting at one end thinking about a refrigerator. And he's at the other end thinking about bird hunting. And that's all their lives are, is their damn thoughts. I'm trying to get a song on the radio. But I'm getting the news, which is about some Russians and the White House. Although it's their White House, not ours. They're fighting, of course. Karen wants a soft serve at the Dairy Delight, which is good with me. Because I like to see her tongue go dabbling in that sweet stuff. You can't beat a tongue for pleasure. It must have been hell when they used to cut people's tongues out. I'd rather go blind. Uh, now it's the stock market, which I could give a shit about. The only person I knew who cared about that was Billy Thompson, the lawyer's son, who was the only boy in French club in high school. And it wasn't on account of the girls. He liked French. Which is sort of sad to my mind. Anyhow, I put my money into my truck. It's got chrome-plated tailpipes and a set of mud flaps with Yosemite Sam on them saying, back off, that sort of shit. I start to mash the gas pedal down because I'd like to drive right out of this poem, but I can't, of course. I'm like one of those clowns that Shakespeare liked to make fun of. Though clown doesn't mean makeup and a red nose, like at the Shrine Circus. It means a rustic, someone who prefers living to talking about living. Writers fear life, so they make art, which is cozy, and I can't blame them. Karen's burning a hole in my thigh. She's rubbing her thigh against mine, kind of distracted like. And I just as soon stay with her in this rapid box until next week. I'm not credible. I'm not predictable. I'm not malleable. I wish I could eat every word in Karen's spacious mouth. Shoplifting by Baron Wormser. The store dick lays a hand on your shoulder three steps from the exit. He asks what's in your pockets, but it's more like a statement than a question. Two candy bars and a roll of film. Your stomach melts and your heart starts to beat like when you used to race on the playground. 
He tells you to sit down on the bench by the doors. Usually there are some old people sitting there, gambling about bargains. But no one's around this late in the evening. You expect the manager to show up and give you a lecture about kids nowadays, but he doesn't. And when the cop appears and doesn't say anything special beyond you'll have to go to court, when he gives you the paper he's almost smiling, or he's not there at all, he's not seeing you. Thoughts, thoughts, your head's raw dough one moment, light as a balloon the next. They're always playing a song in the background in these stores that you can't quite identify. Your foot's tapping to the vacant beat, and after the cop leaves and you can leave, you don't for some minutes. You don't even own a camera.